fast forward, here it is. Welcome back to the estate. A question that I've had for many years is what is the difference between the RCBS and the Lee three-piece die sets, or I should say any die sets. One of these is for a 357 Magnum. The other is for 44 Magnum. If you're looking to buy a Lee set, please watch this. I would strongly recommend not. Both die sets at first glance look to be proper die sets. To my astonishment, actually there was some considerable differences in these sets. My goal with this video is that if you're on the fence of buying Lee reloading dies, that you can watch this and you'll have a, a little bit better educated guess on why they're less expensive, cheaper, and where you're saving the money. And if it's worth the money you save for the product you're getting. Watch this, let me know what you think, and let me know what your final decision is. So I had a friend and he told me that he preferred the Lee. I've used RCBS all my life and I was curious myself. The Lees are considerably cheaper when you go to buy them and it comes with free shell hold. First impressions are the Lee box sucks. It's a piece of cheap, piece of crap plastic. Feels like it's gonna shatter at any moment. So the thing with the RCBS, the that thing I can open it with one hand really easily. I don't have to worry about losing a lid or cracking a lid, but I guess you get what you pay for, right? The Lee die set, this thing is brand new this year. It's just a few months old. This little guy here, this is from 1989. Uh, anyway, I'm not reviewing the manual, but the Lee thing is just a fold out sheet. It feels like, after, I mean, well, I just tore it right there. It, it feels like a piece of crap. And here we have real, true American paper right here. I don't know. All I know is that within five seconds, I've already tore the Lee thing and the instruction manual for the RCBS. That thing's been around for, what, 30 years? Holy, holy crap, it has been around for 30 years. Let's take a look at the components. Both do the exact same thing, but they do it a little bit differently. And I'd say the Lee finds a very unique way to accomplish its task. So in the center, right here and here, you've got the sizing die. So then that brings us to the next die that you've got to use, and that is the expander die. And that is those two dies right there. It opens just enough so that you can put the bullet inside and get it seated properly. So after you've expanded the neck, put your powder in, put your bullet on it, and then you're gonna cycle it through the bullet seating dies. And that's gonna push the bullet down. It also functions as a crimp or two. This one comes with a few different parts. One of them is this fancy yellow powder measure. I think that's just garbage. Now, this is a nice feature that the Lees have. It has its own shell holder. It says it's a free shell holder. No, you're paying for it. Or you're just paying too much for these and then getting it free. But either way, it does come with a shell holder, which is nice. So that saves you, what, five, seven bucks right there. And you're probably what I think it was about seven dollars cheaper than the RCBS or the Hornady ones. So, so really, you know, you're saving probably anywhere from ten to fifteen dollars to buy this set, and you don't have to buy a stupid shell holder. I like that. Now here with the RCBS, you get a spacer ring, so that if you have these set to presets, you can theoretically. Go back and forth from 357 Magnum to uh, 38 Special by just adding this spacer ring underneath the locking nut and you don't have to do any other changes. Well, I don't know. Maybe that works for other people. I never use it. It also comes with, there's one inside here already, the seating die, but it comes with different bullet seating adjustments. So this one you could is rounded inside, so you use that with round nose bullets. So this one's for the wad cutter, and then I have one that's very similar to that. It's for semi-wad cutters. I have that installed here. I like that feature. The Lee set does not have multiples. It just has one, one size fits all. I'm sure it'll work just okay. And then you may notice that I've got uh, one bullet in each of these. I have those so I can test the case when I'm expanding the neck to make sure that I've got it expanded correctly. I like it to be just right, just like Goldilocks. 
So let's just look at these one by one in order of operations that you're going to use this. So here's your decapping slash uh, sizing die. Now this is going to be really, I think, focus you pretty sick. All right. It's really hard to tell on there, but inside there's a separate ring. You can see that, uh, that joint. That's the carbide, that shiny silver material inside. Nice thing about carbide, it lasts virtually forever, but you also don't have to use lubrication. Um, on rifle dies with the neck cartridges, on my set at least, I've got to lube them up. And I learned the hard way, if you don't use the right amount of lube, you're screwed. I'm not going to do side by side the whole way through, but I do want to show you the, the difference in the carbide. You, even on this piece of crap camera, you should be able to see the mirror finish focus. There's a mirror finish on that carbide in the RCBS die. And you just have kind of a basic kind of polished finish, but not. it's just not the same. It's just not that same high quality, same luster. So there's 25 cents worth of extra uh, machining that they saved. Now on the decapping pin on this Lee, it's just a basic pin and it goes all the way through and it has this piece of hex stock and they've threaded one end and split it down the middle so that when you tighten it down, it clamps down on that pin. Supposedly that's designed so that if you hit an obstruction when you're deep priming, that this pin's supposed to slide up through there and save the day and not ruin your, your set. But this one, all except for this nut right here, this locking nut, is all still. It's the only one that's all still. Everything else has a lot more aluminum, but this has the aluminum locking ring. And then it has this O-ring right here to give it a little bit of friction to keep it in place so while it's sitting there, it doesn't just freely spin. I don't like it. I took the aluminum one on this expander die and I replaced it with the steel RCBS one. Just the fit and finish just isn't as nice on these. Now onto the expander. The expander is kind of odd as a whole through and through. At first I thought it was just for using with a progressive loader and then I looked in the manual and you put your primed case in there, bring this up and then you fill that full of powder. I don't know, whatever it is, I don't like it. Maybe I'm just a little bit diased. I look at that, it just seems gimmicky to me. Needless to say, it's, it's not my favorite feature. I could live without it. It's, it's not how I would reload even if I could. So for me, that's just a stupid idea. Let me get this apart. So I went through and cleaned this up. This thing was a greasy, nasty mess inside before. But at the top, you've got this aluminum piece with, once again, a rubber O-ring to hold it in place. It just, I don't know, it just screams piece of garbage. Okay, and then inside you have your expander right here. So the, the case mouth is gonna go into there and hopefully you can tell, it just has a slight angle to it so it'll bell out the, the mouth of the case so you can get a bullet in there easy. I'm sure that works all right, it's just weird. I don't understand why or what they're trying to do here aside from try to make this as cheap as possible and save money in manufacturing. This is a piece of centered metal. This is the other thing that really irks me. Look inside there. Uh, focus, you piece of garbage. Come on. But I mean, look inside there. That is just all chattered up. Like, my camera doesn't even want to focus on it because it's so stinking chattered up. It's an abomination to machinists everywhere. Now, the third die, this is the bullet seating die. Okay, it has, just like this one used to, it has the aluminum lock nut with a O-ring on it to try to hold it in place. Because I, I can't tell you how many times the stinking uh, lock nuts have fallen off this and I can't find them anywhere. That's why I have extras. Actually, the reason I have extras is because I took, I didn't take the time to put lubrication on when I should have and been regretting it ever since. I'm going to take this apart. Hopefully you can see into that a little better. 
The machining on this one is just slightly better than it was on that expander. But this also is aluminum. So you, you've got your steel body, but you end up with all these stupid aluminum parts. I don't have anything against aluminum, okay? I'm an equal opportunity metallurgist myself. I just, I just not a big fan of having these aluminum parts in with the steel parts. As you can see, it's already kind of chowdered up. And there's no locking ring on this. It's all just friction based off that stupid O-ring. I don't know why it irks me. It just does, okay? You just gonna have to deal with it. We have the same situation here. We got all these extra pieces and parts. You have this free floating, uh, the seating portion of the die. You do you use this to adjust how deep the bullet goes. Just see that fine machining inside of there. Anyway, enough's enough. Now in there you can see a little bit of lip. That lip is on an angle. That is the portion that crimps your bullet case after you've seated the bullet. Now you can do that all in one motion. I personally prefer to do that in two. I think I just get a better, more consistent result. The biggest qualm I have on this particular item is it is very easy to double thread. You have to pay very close attention so as not to do that. Double thread that and you just basically waste the whole set. I can tell you, I can tell a difference in, in this carbide versus the RCBS carbide. It is not as smooth. It didn't scratch the case, it didn't do anything negative, but it definitely did not have the same less incompetence, whatever that is, that French word. You could just tell it just doesn't have enough of that. You know what I mean? Now, we've already looked at this die. It works the same way, same principle. The main difference on this one, other than it's much higher quality, higher finish, everything being steel on it, except for the set screw, which is brass. Let's go back to here. Here, you've either got to crank this down into your press or you've got to use two wrenches and go put one on these flats here just to readjust this deprimering pin, decapping pin. On this one, you've just, you've got your nice knurled got a lock nut, and then you, but you can make the adjustments of where you want that decapper to be very easily. It doesn't require any special tools and it's very easy to adjust. Now we have the expander die. Let me get that apart. But once again, this actually has a knurled lock nut on it so that when you, you get this set to where you want, you can lock it in place and you don't have any fear of that changing or switching until you do that. You do it purposely. You're not just relying on a rubber O-ring to cause enough pressure and friction that it doesn't um, unadjust as you're cycling the press. I did test the centered metal inserts that it has for the expander die and I tested it with a file so it, it is hardened. I'll give them that. So here we have an actual milled piece of steel. Um, it has a whole lot more range, more range than you're ever going to need to expand the case mouth. But you can just instantaneously see and feel just the higher quality, the attention to detail, and it's almost like they cared. This is over 30 years old, okay? Now, it doesn't have a mirror finish on the inside, but you can see it is a much nicer. It's not just chowdered up, but it's a nice milled finish inside there. Uh, it's it's just a better quality. Now, yeah, there's there's some crap in there. But on this, really, the only part that comes in contact with your case is this. Last but not least, here we have the seating die. This is something else I like. On all RCBS dies, they've got the ear printed clearly on it. You know exactly how old it is. Here we have everything made of steel. You take a flathead screwdriver and you can easily adjust the bolt seating depth with that. And then you just turn this uh, knurled lock nut down and you're good to go. I've taken the, the actual seat for the bullet, I've taken that out. And like I said, this one's for the semi wad cutter. I really like this one for my hollow points and flat nose bullets. And I do a lot of semi wad cutters too, but it just seems to be a good all around 
bolt seat. You got three generations of crap build up in this thing and Yeah, that's perfectly clear. But I mean, you can kind of catch a reflection off in there. They just they just took care of it. They just made a nice piece of equipment. But there are some clear reasons why this set is more expensive than this. And this isn't even the most expensive set. But for your standard reloading set, the RCBS is gonna perform awesome for you. I can vouch for that. Go with what you want, but on this, you really are getting what you pay for. And I think you're actually getting a little bit more for your buck when you buy this than you are for this. Now, as I've been discussing, you know, you're saving, what, maybe 15 bucks overall if you go with this Lee set. Yes, I know. Buy once, cry once. Well, guess what? I don't even have a 44 mag. I don't even know if I'll ever shoot the bullets that I'm going to reload. But I ended up with approximately this amount of 44 brass. I don't know, I got a sickness. I have the brass, I have to load it up. It'll sit in my ammo storage for 50 years, and then someone's gonna be looking at that, and they're gonna be like, oh, I don't know who loaded that, and they're gonna throw it away, and all my stuff's for naught. Or, if I'm lucky, a Boy Scout will get it, and he'll toss it into a campfire, and it'll uh, heat things up. This is probably all I'm ever gonna reload. I'm regretting it myself, and I've only used the one die so far. I'm trying to rethink my life choices right now. So then that brings us to the next die.